Aloha, everybody. Welcome to today's push-up challenge. We are going to start things off, as we always do, with a big mahalo to today's year-round partner sponsor, California Pizza Kitchen. They are doing a whole lot to help keep all of you healthy and fit during the COVID-19 pandemic and to help keep all of these virtual activities up and running. As I have said, the fitness challenges for March will all be events in our Spring Fitness Classic. Today is one of the more difficult events, the push-up. So we're going to start things off with a demo done by our lovely friend, Ian, who I believe is actually in the audience with us today. Um, so please pay attention and watch what he does and try your best to model his form. For the standard or level one push-up, start in a high plank position with your hands shoulder width apart and feet about hip width apart. A full toilet paper roll must be placed vertically under the chest. The athlete must lower their chest until it touches the toilet paper roll. Their shirt must be tucked in and no other body part can come into contact with the floor. The body must be kept close to a straight line. Once the athlete touches their chest to the roll, they must come all the way back up to the starting position with arms extended. This will count as one repetition. For the push-ups, the camera must be pointed down to the floor so the entire body of the athlete can be seen. The athlete's head should be facing forward and the camera should be slightly to the left or right of the athlete's head. No more than 15 degrees. Officials need to see the head, shoulders. All right, so that was for the standard version. For the, for the modified version, we will be doing this. For the level two or modified push-up, start in a high plank position with hands shoulder width apart and knees in contact with the floor. A full toilet paper roll must be placed vertically under the chest. The athlete must lower their chest until it touches the toilet paper roll. The shirt must be tucked in. The body must be kept close to a straight line from shoulders to knees. Once the athlete touches their chest to the roll, they must come all the way back up to the starting position. With Awesome. Now that we've watched the demo, we understand how to do this exercise properly. Let's get ready for our warm up. And again, because this is an exercise that requires some floor space, be sure you have enough room to do both the whole warm up and the exercise. So now let's get warmed up for our fitness challenge. First thing, are our washing machines. Put your arms out in front of your body and we're gonna twist side to side 10 times. And we're gonna bring our shoulders perpendicular to our hips. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Good job. All right, next, windmills. We'll stretch out our shoulder joint, and what we're going to do is be bringing our arms all the way up and back and being sure that our elbows reach our ears. So two, three, four, five, and we're going to want to do this ten times. Six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Now the other arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Next, we're going to do our lower body. So we're going to do flamingos, and we're going to want to bring our knees up and hold them one at a time while balancing on the other leg. This will stretch out kind of the back part of our butts. So bring your knee up and balance. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. Now we're going to do the other side. Bring your knee up and then balance. And it might be hard, but try to keep it if you can. And if you can't, you're going to want to find a wall or something that you can lean on to help prop yourself up with one of your arms, all right? So bring your knee up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. Next, we're going to do kind of the same thing, but by bringing our feet back and balancing. So grab your ankle and then balance and hold. So one, two, three, four, five. And you should really feel this through the front of your leg. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. Now let's switch and do the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. All right. Now we're kind of all limbered up, and let's get into our fitness challenge. Whew. As usual, I will give all of you a three-second countdown to start, and then a five-second countdown for each round um, as it ends. We are going to take a, breast, a break between rounds, and we are going to do three separate total rounds. That means we are doing three rounds of push-ups. I want to see all of you try to do better on each round so do better on the second if you can than you did on the first and on the third than you did on the second we're going to keep trying to improve all right get ready we're going to start in three two one go great job alice get it Great form, Peter. Keep going. Keep going. Great modified push-up, Kaylee. Remember, you want to try to get as low as you would in, on, the, uh, on the competition. All right. And five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Awesome job, Nicole. Didn't get that in quite in time because I was doing the countdown. You all did great on that one. Some quick feedback, kind of general feedback. If you are doing the standard while you don't have the standard push up, while you don't have to have a toilet paper roll, try to stay straight and bring your entire body down just as low as you would if you had the toilet paper roll, right? And if you're doing the modified, try to do the same thing and just control your body as much as you possibly can, even though you have your lower legs on the ground, right? Okay, now that we've had a bit of a break, we're going to get going again. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh. Way to go, Ian. Imagine that. Great form. Great form. Good job. Awesome job, Gilbert. Awesome job. Remember, everybody, you want to try to touch your chest to that toilet paper roll if you have one. Fantastic. Great job, Ho'opio. And five, four, three. Two, one, go. Oh, stop. I meant, I meant stop. Sorry. My bad. How many of you did better on the second round than on the first round? Awesome. And how many of you think you have it in you to do better on the third round 
than you did on the first and second rounds. Who thinks they can do that? Yeah. Love it, Kaylee. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. We're going to get ready for our final round in five, four, three, two, one, go. Woo! Great job. Remember, for these push-ups, it's all about controlling your body, tightening through your core, and really lowering your body to the whole depth that you need to reach. So even if you don't have a toilet paper roll, we want you to try to pretend that there's one there, right? And this is great practice for your Spring Fitness Classic competition, right? Remember, you don't want to let your entire body touch the ground. You want to just touch the toilet paper and roll and have a controlled motion. Okay, and five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Awesome. Y'all all did great on that last round. I know y'all were particularly tired because we had already done two whole rounds. How many of you did your did their most number of push-ups on the first round? How many of you did the most push-ups on the second round? How many of you did the most push-ups on the third round? Nice. Way to go, everybody. I'm really proud of that. You all did phenomenal. And I expect every single one of you that's competing in push-ups in the Spring Fitness Classic to do even better in the competition now, right? Yeah. Shake your heads. Awesome. Thank y'all. Next week, we have our side-to-side -side twists, which is uh, another one of the events in the Spring Fitness Classic. And we will have Diana here demonstrating them. For those of you not competing in this event, um, this will work as a nice mobility movement. The side-to-side -side twists. If necessary, remove armrests from the wheelchair. Otherwise, the athlete should stand if possible. The athlete will begin face forward with their arms raised out to the side of their body, shoulder height like a T. The athlete will twist their the side to side for the side to side twists. If necessary, remove armrests from the wheelchair. Otherwise, the athlete should fight like a T, hips facing forward until the opposite arm is pointing straight ahead of them. They will then twist their upper body the opposite direction until the opposite arm is facing the front. Each time the athlete brings their... Awesome. That was our side-to-side -side twist. It'll be a nice little mobility movement for a lot of us. And remember when we do it next week, it's about control, right? So you're going to want to stand up tall, tighten your core, and pull your entire body through the movement so that you get a nice stretch through your entire trunk. Okay, now we're going to jump into a nice health talk. Today, today we will be talking about healthy substitutes during cooking. Um, they're a very, very common thing that we hear a lot about in commercials and when t people talk about diets and diet food and it's and what it really should be instead of rules is just kind of a nice way to make some dishes that might not be the best choice a little bit better. And special shout out to Nip for inspiring this last night. <laughs> Okay, so sometimes the snacks and meals we want aren't very healthy, right? I know for me, sometimes I want some candy, but I can't always have that. <laughs> but we still love them. 
Can any of you give me an example of a snack like that or a meal like that that they really like, but we kind of know isn't super duper healthy? Just pop it into the chat. Ian wants cake. That's fair. Cake is very hard to make healthy. Chips. Yep, Seth, chips. And it is, we all do get tempted by this. You're right. Veggie pizza, Ryan. Good, good. Awesome. It looks like we all kind of have an idea of some snacks or some foods that we like to eat and that we want and we get tempted by, as Seth put it, um, but that we also know aren't necessarily the best choice for us, right? My personal favorite example of something like this is pasta, because pasta is really, really starchy, right? And my favorite pastas are the ones that have the most starch. So we, using pasta as an example, we can talk about how pasta isn't always the healthiest choice, right? Especially depending on what you put on it. But even without sauce or without cheese or without anything like that, pasta is really, really high in starch. It's like eating a whole bunch of just white sandwich bread with nothing else. And this starch turns into sugar very, very fast. This makes pasta not necessarily the best choice a lot of the time. And this also goes for other kind of bready stuff or any kind of stuff that uses a lot of white flour or a lot of sugar. But can we still enjoy pasta? And can we have it as a regular part of our diets? And if you think so, how do you think so? Pop your answers into the chat if you can. So one example or one way that we can incorporate or include or have these kinds of foods in our regular diet is to have them sparingly or moderately, right? If we have them every once in a while, that's fine. But what if we have a massive, massive craving and we just absolutely love pasta and it's like our favorite thing or pizza is our favorite thing? and we absolutely have to have it, how can we make that dish or that meal a little bit healthier? Well, there are some really, really simple strategies and a lot of you have probably heard of them. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and this works for all kinds of dishes, is to cut the pasta with something healthy, like vegetables. And when I say cut, I don't mean cut it like with a knife. I mean, put a lesser portion or less pasta in the dish you make and add vegetables in to replace how much pasta we aren't putting in it. That's what we mean when we say cut the pasta. Exactly, Seth, you add vegetables or another healthy ingredient that doesn't have as much starch or doesn't have the same kind of ingredients in it that would make pasta kind of less healthy, right? So when you cut with vegetables, when you're replacing part of pasta with vegetables or part of any ingredient, and when you're baking, you can use less white flour and use some wholemeal flour with it or use less flour in general and replace it with almond flour. There are a lot of different things that you can use to replace, right? And use to cut. So often we cut the amount of a less healthy ingredient with vegetables. So for example, if you're making a pasta dish, you can cut the pasta in half the amount that you would have. So instead of a full fistful of spaghetti, you do half of that 
and then you add in a couple of cups of broccoli, right? The broccoli has a lot less starch. The broccoli has a lot less calories and the broccoli is actually a lot more filling too. So you'll probably even get full faster while eating even less. Plus broccoli has a lot more nutrients and you don't even have to use broccoli. You can use any vegetable that you want. Now, something else you can do, and this is probably most common when we see commercials about um, kind of health stuff, is just replacing it, right? Lots of people come up with lots of different ways to replace different ingredients and even whole dishes, right? So can we replace pasta with anything else? Yes. Of course we can. And who wants to give me an example of something that they think they can replace pasta with or something that you have replaced pasta with already in the past? Shrimp, yep. Ian, shredded carrots. That's a really good one. What else? Peas? Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to get off topic real fast. I know I've said it a few times, but frozen peas are actually my favorite replacement for popcorn. I know it sounds crazy, but next time you're at the grocery store, buy a bag of frozen peas and just eat them without, without even cooking them or warming them up. Try it. And if people look at you crazy, just tell them, well, I know this crazy guy named Walker, and he said it wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, now, uh, back to replacing in general. Uh, when we make a dish, we can replace some of the less healthy ingredients with other ingredients, right? So for example, in pasta, we can kind of get the same kind of experience that we would have if we ate pasta by replacing it with something that's a little bit similar, but is made up of stuff that's totally different and maybe has a lot less starch or a lot less of the stuff in it that would make a certain food less healthy, right? So in the pasta example, we can use spaghetti squash, which is a type of squash a type of squash that kind of shreds and it kind of turns into almost like squash noodles. You can use spiral cut zucchini, which is zucchini cut into little itty teeny strands. That kind of works out like pasta. As Ian said, you can use shredded carrots. That kind of does the same thing. There are lots of different ways to do it. How many of you have ever heard of cauliflower pizza? Anyone? Or cauliflower pizza dough? Yeah, that is actually another replacement like this. So instead of using flour and instead of using bread, what they're using is mashed up and cooked cauliflower to work as the bread of the pizza. And so they've replaced that bread that was maybe a little bit less healthy with something that is a lot more healthy and made the whole pizza a little bit better, right? Yes, from California Pizza Kitchen, who is actually today's sponsor. Thank you, California Pizza Kitchen. <laughs> so can we use these strategies with other foods? I know we've talked a little bit about pizza today and about pasta. pasta but can any of you give me some examples of other foods that you might want to try something like this with? And if you have an example already of something you want to try replacing, go ahead and pop it into the chat.
Oh uh, yeah, Ian, quinoa, that's a great replacement for some stuff. It works really, really well in dishes that uh, require rice. Um, I have actually had quinoa uh, sushi before. Uh, we can actually, there are some substitutions for chicken nuggets, yes. The other day, I had vegan chicken nuggets that actually use tempeh, um, fried tempeh, as a chicken nugget, and that was very, very good. And it also had a lot less oil in it. Yep, uh, Ryan, you can have a veggie dog. Those are really, really good as well. Awesome. It seems like a lot of us kind of have an idea and understand how to do this. Um, if you can, if you get the opportunity, go ahead and please try some replacements when you cook this week. If you cook this week, I would love to hear about it next week. Um, and thank all of you so much for listening and paying attention. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate it when you stay on. And thank you so, so, so much. And we will see you on Wednesday tomorrow for our weekly workout. And that workout will be the, oh, dance workout with Noel. Awesome. We all love Noel. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have so much fun. I'm real excited about this one. I hope all of you are too. The ID for that is 815-3406-5939. And that's Wednesday, March 10th at 3.30 p.m. We'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait to dance it off with y'all. I know Noelle's going to be excited, and we're going to have a blast. And as always, if you have any health questions, bingo questions, or virtual and stay fit questions, just email me, Walker. My email is ha at sohawaii.org. <laughs> there it is, popped up on the screen for you. I don't get too many emails from y'all, but if you need it, there it is. And even if you just want to say hi, sure. Um, awesome. Now let's go ahead and come off mute and let's all enjoy our talk story time, yeah?